I've been using Canva to make my YouTube thumbnails since day one. And even though Canva makes things really easy, you do have to get a little creative in order to use it to its fullest potential. So in this video, I'm gonna share six Canva tips and tricks that I've learned over the years to help me make my YouTube thumbnails. Let's get started. So the first thing is to push the background. YouTube thumbnails really stand out when they almost look 3D. And the way that you can do that is to push the background to the background and then pull the subject to the foreground. And there's a couple ways that you can do this in Canva. So first, if you are using a photo that has a subject in it, for example, here's a photo of me in the studio and then I'm gonna be the subject since I'm the one who's talking. You could take the exact same photo, but just remove the subject. And here's how you're gonna do this. So first I'm gonna click on the image that has a subject in it and then remove the background. This is a Canva Pro feature, totally worth it, but there are other ways that you can remove the background like remove.bg. And then once you have your subject, you are good to go. And then what you could do is I actually have a saved favorite photo of just my studio with no subject. And then what I do is I send this to the back and now it looks like I'm in my studio, right? But then I just make, make it so that the you know, the picture fills the back like this and just size accordingly. So it looks like I'm in my studio. And right now the picture kind of looks like the same one that I've taken, but here's how you can push the background. So click on your background photo and then hit edit image. And we're gonna go to the adjust settings right here. I'm gonna see all, and then I'm going to decrease the brightness, right? So that makes the subject brighter. Another thing I like to do is add a blur to kind of give that like, you know, depth, right? So the subject is really clear and then the background's a little bit blurred. And then I also like to add a vignette. So just to make it even more, you know, darker around the edges. And I just kind of play around, especially with these three. So see how it looks like there's more depth just to show you what our original photo looked like. It looked like this. And then the other thing I really like to do every single time is to change the, like zoom in and zoom out on Canva so that you can actually see, like most people are looking at a thumbnail like this. And here's where you could really tell the difference between this one where I really pop out and this one where yes, my studio looks great, but especially if I were to add text, like it's really busy and your eyes don't automatically focus on a single subject. The same thing applies if you're using one of Canva's backgrounds. So, you know, say you just had a picture of the subject and then we can go to background here. I don't know, say, say you're gonna use this one. Uh, I would, I do the same thing. I go back to these same three things. Oops, decrease the brightness, add a blur, um, add the vignette, you know, and then just kind of play around. And when I zoom out, see how it stands out again. Also, what I see a lot of is people using a solid color as a background, which is totally cool, right? So if you wanna do that, what I would encourage you to do is to use a background that has texture, right? Rather than just a solid like purple, you know, block or something like that. So say like this, there's a little bit, oh, that kind of grosses me out. We are <laughs> backing that up. I don't know, let's go for this. Sure, right? So same thing applies. There is a little bit of texture, but it makes it just, I don't know just adds more depth, that's what I think. I think it just adds more depth. And I like that effect, right? On a solid, a more solid color, like that looks cool. I would probably decrease this, right? So let's zoom out, boom, looking good. Another thing you could do is if you happen to have a background, let me go into photos and let's say that we took a photo on, I don't know, took a photo on the street, like something like this. Uh, and you want to make it on brand. Actually, let me use something with more realistic colors. So say something like this, right? What you could do to make it more on brand with your colors is to add a shape. I do this all the time, actually, to, to add the purple. Put that over, I'm gonna put me up here first. Put that over your background and then play with the opacity. Where are you? Here. the transparency to give it that like tint of the color that is your brand for me it's purple right so if we were to remove this that's what the realistic colors look like oi 
and then here just to go back you know so there's just a little bit of that purple tint and then of course like don't forget to do the push the background stuff tip number two is to wait for this <laughs> this icon right here there are so many times like i just don't wait for it i don't know why uh you really need to wait for the cloud save so canva is a cloud program and sometimes I, it doesn't work as fast as i do and especially if you're doing things like editing images and adding effects if you don't wait for that thing to save like it'll mess up the whole thing so here here's an example i'm going to add me here and then I'll add the same photo again because I'm going to use the, the background. I'll take one of these and I'm going to remove the background. And there I go. So I'm going to click apply and see how it says all changes saved. Now, if I wanted to add like another effect, okay, let's do, I don't know. I'm going to show you how to do this in the next one. I'm just going to try to do this really fast to show you the cloud save thing. Like, see where it says saving paused? You need to wait until that changes to all changes saved. Because if you start messing with this and then click apply, it will not work sometimes. Of course, when I'm showing you, it doesn't work. So either way, look for this, <laughs> look for this check mark in the cloud. Like that is the number one tip right there. And another thing that you can do is always duplicate your pages. Like whenever you do another step you add another effect just duplicate the page so just in case the undo doesn't work for whatever reason you have another copy right there and you can work off of the last step and you can always like it's so easy to add and delete all right so the next thing is to pull the subject to the foreground here's me the subject and we're gonna pull it to the foreground in a couple of ways first what we can do is add a drop shadow so we can go to i have shadows right here because it's recently used but basically just scroll down to shadows and you'll see the drop shadow right here so i will add the drop shadow i'll add a black shadow by default you can play around here if you want to make it on brand i think that looks pretty good but again it adds that it adds that depth because it looks like something is floating on top, I'm gonna decrease the offset a little bit. Boom. So wait for the save. <laughs> so this isn't as obvious because of my background, but if I were to duplicate this and put it on top of a more obvious background, let's see. Um, okay, let's do, I don't know, let's just pick this, right? So here I go. Now you could really see the shadow. So. I can increase here and then you'll see that when I zoom out, there's a little bit of a shadow. It's the same one with this. So again, like my background has a lot of like dark color, so it's not as obvious, but here it's really obvious. So especially if you're using a background that is more solid and doesn't have a lot of noise or a lot of stuff in the background, the shadow will really help it pop out. Another thing you can do is to add a glow. So let me remove my background again. Uh, boom, I'm gonna duplicate this just so I have me without any effects. Okay, so you can add a glow, same thing, scroll down to shadows and then you'll find glow. And the glow is almost like a drop shadow by default, as you can see. Uh, but you can adjust it so you can make it, you know, whatever. Okay, that's not enough contrast, but say you wanted to add like a, a pink glow, you can play with the transparency. Um, this is also how I add a solid white outline, which is very YouTubery. So it's just the glow effect. I use white, uh, I decrease the blur because I want it to be more of like a solid white, increase the transparency, and then adjust the size. So now you have that white outline that's very like, you know, very common in YouTube thumbnails like this. And then you can add your text right here. And then other things that you can do kind of similarly to what we did with the background is to edit the image that's in, or edit the subject that's in the foreground. So you would basically just do the opposite, like increase the brightness of the subject, right? Um, that's a little too bright so I can adjust the contrast. You can play with, you know, the saturation, whatever, just to make it stand out even more. And then you can check by zooming out. Looks great. Next is to explore 
elements, the elements tab in Canva. So the elements tab is honestly probably the tab that I spend the most time in because this is like the closest thing to, to graphic designing. Like if I wanted to add an arrow, for example, boom, I just type it in. Um, there's all kinds of arrows. You got, you know, neon ones, and then you can change the color. Say I wanted to do like a, you know, really obvious red. Say I was like pointing to something. Like even if it isn't an object. So say your video is about like how to do this in a shorter amount of time or whatever. You can look for a clock, which is, you know, in reference to time. But even if it's like, you know, uh, an underline under text or something like that, just to make it more tactile and you know more your style that's what i like i use all of these kinds of lines all the time because the only lines that you get in canva are just like these solid straight lines and i i like to have things a little bit more messy but obviously like there's so many elements in here so have fun another thing that you can do is uh let's see let's do paint um, see if this works. Magic recommendations. I don't know if that's a Canva Pro thing. I can't remember, but these are actually pretty good. And what you can do is see what the uh, tags are on that specific element. So if you like this element, maybe you can look at other elements that have the brush tag, right? So you can, you know, dig in deeper. There's so many thousands of elements that you can add just to make your thumbnails more fun. I layer elements all the time. So in elements, uh, one of the things I use are the mockups. Say like a computer mockup like this. I'll do this and I'll move me over, like clean this up a little bit. Oi. Clean this up. So I've got like, you know, say I'm making this thumbnail, like I'm showing you something in Canva, which is a computer program, so something like that. And then I would find a picture of Canva. Um, let me just use Tom, like pretend he's the screenshot. <laughs> pretend this is a, I don't know, my monitor background and pretend it like fit. We're just going, going quick here. Let me actually, let me just do it. Crop. Boom. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> what you could do is layer your elements to make, to just add more depth. So say we wanted to do like, I don't know, uh, celebration or something like that. Go back into elements and then say we can do, actually, I kind of like the stars. Let's add stars, Let's see what that looks like. I don't know, something like that. I just resize and I don't know, we'll change the color, um, play with the transparency, throw it to the back so it's behind me too. See how it's just, there's a, just more depth, right? And you want to make sure that you're, it's like not distracting, but remember just push the back to the back and pull the front to the front. And you can, this is the part where you have to get creative with Canva. So it, it gives you all the tools, but I think it does take some exploring and playing around to really make it stand out. Actually, this brings me to my next point, which is to add texture, which is kind of what I've been doing. So say like, say we wanted to use a solid background, just grab this shape and make it fill the whole canvas. And we are going to change it. Let's do this color and let's send it to the back position to the back right so now we've got a solid color the shadow looks really good though but it's a little plain what we can add texture right so you can go back into elements and say we can do i don't know diamonds or something like that uh that's weird what happens if we type in texture oh this is kind of cool so say like i don't know Something like this, right? So make this fill the back like that. And then just make sure to send it back. See how it just adds a little bit more. And if this is too loud, right? We just push the background again. So we can um, make it like play with the opacity. 
Uh, so we're pushing the back. We can edit the image so you can, you know, play with all these other effects. And we zoom out. There you go. So it just, it looks a little bit, it just has that extra more than this, right? And the other thing I like to do is sometimes add a glow manually. So let's do something like this, right? So I could do this and I can put that behind the subject to make it, you know, to add that like pop out effect. So just send it to the back and see now it has that, has this glow effect as opposed to, we'll take out the glow effect, right? So now there's the glow effect, boom. And then this one doesn't have it. So you see how it's just these little subtle things. Um, you know, we could do this, like a little sunburst. I don't know, same thing. Send it to the back, boom, right? So it just, wait, we need to send it back one more because it's covering our monitor, boom. Boom, just adds a little bit of that. Other things I like to do that are more like, I don't know, painstaking, but sometimes it's worth it is glow line. Like I'll go line by line. I do that, I actually do that all the time. So say like this, I know this is blue on blue, but pretend it wasn't right. Like match it like this and then send that to the back like that like that see like I'll do all four corners just to make it pop out a little bit more so again there's so many elements there's so many ways to add texture so that your YouTube thumbnails like go from this to this and I think that you know this is fine but this is just more engaging more eye-catching more youtubery like I, I think this one just catches your eye more than this one and the last uh, tip I would say is to add layers to your text. So say, you know, say we're doing, I don't know, let's just use this for now. Uh, now this already has a, an effect on it because there's that blue under the pink. You can see right here, it's this glitch effect. I'm a big fan of the glitch effect, but how do we make this a little bit more, just a, just stand out a little bit more, right? So what we could do is we can add uh, a text box like this, that's kind of the obvious. So let's send that to the back, boom, right? We can even send it behind me and that'd be kind of, that'd be kind of cool, boom. So it goes behind me too, that's, I like that, right? Sometimes when I wanna take things a step further and you know, it just depends like how I'm feeling. So say, what I could do is I'll copy this text exactly and I'll make it a little bit bigger like this and I'll make the font color white like that and put it over. We'll say I'm gonna make it green so it just stands out a little more like this so I, you can see the example. Uh, and then I'm gonna send it behind like that. See, so it, it just adds a little bit more, just a little bit more. So there really is no excuse. Like if you're using Canva to make things pop out, like even if you are not graphically inclined, I'm not either, but it, I mean, everything is here. You just have to play around. Another thing I would recommend is to actually look at uh, Canva's YouTube thumbnail templates because they're pretty good YouTube thumbnail. I mean, these are great to start as a, I mean, even if you just use these, these are great, right? Like change this guy to me, we delete this guy, boom, bam. Like it's pretty good, right? You can, you can customize and make it your own and, and add your brand and stuff like that. They've come a long way. I'm very, very impressed. And my bonus tip is to subscribe to Canva Pro if you haven't already. If you're still using the Canva free version, don't be like me. I <laughs> used the Canva free version for years. I just felt like Canva had enough, but 
Honestly, the pro assets, the pro elements, the background remover, right? Like I use the background remover every single time I make a YouTube thumbnail, every single time. I have no other way to remove the background. I don't know how to use Photoshop, but it's just, it's so easy. It's so accurate every time. That alone is worth the subscription price, but all of the elements that have the pro, uh, you know, icon, they are, better I, I found i found myself using them more than the free ones although the free ones are pretty good but i totally think like i would i would never give up my canva pro subscription now if you like this video i have a whole playlist showing you how i use canva to help me with my youtube channel so check out this playlist next and i'll see you in one of those videos bye